While the GOP underperformed expectations nationwide in the election, stronger-than-expected performances in New York could ultimately make the difference when it comes to control of Congress. Republican Representative-elect Michael Lawler won in a formerly deep blue district just outside New York City, knocking out a Democratic leader in the process. I spoke with him moments ago. Congressman-elect Michael Lawler, welcome to the News Hour. Congratulations on your victory. Uh, we looked it up. Uh, it's been since the early 1960s that New York State has been sending mostly Democrats to Congress. But just this week in this election, you flipped four seats from Democrats to Republicans. Uh, what's going on in New York? Well, we've seen a uh, certainly a surge uh, in the number of Republicans. We flipped four seats uh, on Tuesday night, and we're going to end up sending 11 uh, out of the 26 uh, members of Congress in New York, uh, which is uh, certainly a big increase from where we've been. I mean, back in 2008, after that election, we were down to two members. Uh, so, you know, over the last decade plus, we've been steadily chipping away at it. And uh, here on Tuesday night, we certainly made big gains. And a big part of that was the redistricting fiasco uh, earlier this year in New York. You know, Sean Patrick Maloney, my opponent, as chair of the DCCC, sent a memo to state Democrats demanding that they gerrymander New York's congressional maps and knock Republicans down to three members. Uh, ultimately, they did that, but the courts intervened, threw out the maps, declaring them unconstitutional, and appointed a special master. And ultimately, the maps that we got were fair. And that's why so many of these districts were competitive on Tuesday night. Yeah, re no question, redistricting had a lot to do with it. Was that the main thing? Uh, I would say redistricting coupled with the fact that Democrats control everything in Washington, Albany, and New York City for the first time in our nation's history. And they created a mess, a 41-year record high on inflation, surging crime, skyrocketing energy prices, and a porous southern border. And even in deep blue New York, uh, voters were very frustrated with what was going on, and they wanted to restore balance and common sense. And that's why we picked up four congressional seats. We picked up a number of state assembly seats uh, and even flipped some state Senate seats. So voters really wanted to send a message in New York uh, that one party rule uh, just does not work and, and that we needed to ensure some balance. And I think that, in addition, uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, ha you know, only represented 25 percent of this new 17th district. And so he didn't have the built in advantages of incumbency uh, because I represent 20 percent of uh, the district in the state assembly. And so we were running, you know, uh, pretty much equal. Uh, and I was coming out of Rockland County, which right. uh, was about 2 percent of the district. And I won it by 10 points, uh, which really made the difference here. You uh, you mentioned inflation. You also mentioned what you call surging crime. Um, what is the crime situation in in your district? Uh, we know that um, Sean Patrick Maloney accused you of blowing it out of proportion. I mean, how unsafe are the people of your district? Well, number one, uh, in New York State and in New York City specifically, which is neighboring to my district, uh, we have seen a crime increase. And since cashless bail took effect, uh, index crimes are up 36 percent in New York City. And statewide, 40 percent of those released on non-monetary bail for felony offenses have been rearrested. Crime is relatively stagnant in, in my particular district. But 50 percent of households in my district have a cop, a firefighter, a first responder, or a veteran living in them. And many of those folks work in New York City as part of the NYPD or the FDNY. And so crime was a major issue of concern. A lot of our residents commute into the city to work. So it's not just a function of, you know, the crime rate in my district specific. Crime in New York City impacts everybody, in, especially in the immediate suburbs. Tell us what, in a nutshell, what are your, that is clearly a priority. What are your other priorities? And as we know, Republicans are picking up seats in the House. It appears they are going to have the majority, but not by as big a margin as had been expected. How much do you think you can get done with a small majority in the House? Look, we're going to obviously have to, to work together uh, to pass an agenda. 
But, uh, you know, Kevin McCarthy laid out a commitment to America. Many of those issues were issues that I campaigned on. Obviously, we need to tackle the cost of living and the rising inflation. Uh, we need to uh, increase domestic production of energy if we want to help bring down the cost of gas and home heating, as well as groceries. We need to secure our southern border and stop not only the massive inflow of illegal immigration, but uh, fentanyl pouring into our communities. And at the end of the day, um, to me, we have an obligation uh, to, to ensure that every American, regardless of uh, their political party, uh, can afford to live here. And that is my primary focus. That is why I ran in the first place. And that is my objective. One of the things that I want to tackle is uh, lifting the cap on salt. I think for areas like mine, uh, where we pay among the highest property taxes in America, Right. Uh, you know, we our residents have been negatively impacted by the cap on state and local tax deductions on your federal income tax. Two, so that's two, a priority. Just two very quick questions. How much do you expect you are going to be able to work with uh, Democrats, work across the aisle? Well, in Albany, I have among the most bipartisan voting records uh, in the state legislature. I voted with the Democratic speaker 81 percent of the time and my Republican leader 91 percent of the time. So I worked across the aisle extensively. I have every intention of doing that here. Uh, you know, it doesn't work when we just go from one extreme to the other uh, and back and forth we go. We need to get things done on behalf of the American people and the residents of each of our districts who sent us here. That's my objective. I think uh, the president uh, and Democrats uh, will also have to make some compromise. And I think uh, there's got to be a willingness on all sides to tackle these issues. The American people are suffering right now, uh, especially when it comes to the cost of, of living with record inflation and skyrocketing energy costs. And we have to get that under control. That's my priority. That's my focus. And I have every intention of working across the aisle to get things done. And last question. You said in another interview today that you think the Republican Party needs to move forward beyond Donald Trump. But as you know, many Republicans still support him. Do you think that's realistic? And uh, who are you supporting in 2024? Look, the former president will make, uh, you know, his decision with respect to whether or not he runs in, in 2024, and ultimately the voters will decide. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, great rising stars within the party, um, and I think as we look forward to the future, uh, it's important to have new voices in that process. Uh, but we'll see how the how that process plays out in the uh, in the coming weeks and months ahead. Representative-elect Michael Lawler from New York, thank you very much. And again, congratulations. Thank you.